Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at dollar sign wire inside LiveWire 3. It's something you guys have been asking me a lot in the comments to cover. I have used it in some of my videos, but uh, I decided to dedicate a specific video only to this topic since it's something that you will have to use if you're going to be working with, you know, JavaScript libraries or if you want to write some JavaScript code, it's useful to know about it. Okay, so let's get right into it. First things first. What exactly is this dollar sign wire that you see throughout the documentation? Or you might have heard of it. In simple terms, it's basically a JavaScript representation of your live wire components. Okay, so let me show you guys what I mean by that. So I'm over here on my text editor and I have a simple component. I have named it test. It has nothing really complicated in it. I have a couple of uh, public properties and then two simple methods. And I will come back to these in a second. So basically, dollar sign wire would be the JavaScript version of this PHP code, right, for your front end. And obviously, uh, the way it's going to work is it's only going to have the public aspects of your, you know, test component. So it will have all your, you know, public properties, all your public methods. And so from your JavaScript side, you're going to be able to access them, read them, update them and also call any of these methods and get a response from them. Among a couple of other extra things, you can listen for changes, refresh your component. So it's very useful if you're writing some custom JavaScript logic on the front end side, and you want it to be kind of interactive and work alongside your JavaScript component. Okay, so now that we have gone through the theory, theory stuff, let's go ahead and actually see it in practice. Okay, so as I said, I have this library component. Uh, and over here, I have the blade file for it. And the blade file is quite simple. It's basically an input and a button, right? And for the input itself, I have the input modeled or kind of synced or linked to one of my public properties named text. So let me show you guys that public property. It's the first one that I have. And it is kind of, uh, I have a default value of John, right? Now we're going to use dollar sign wire to read this and also update it using JavaScript, not PHP, but using JavaScript. And then in terms of front end, this is what it looks like right now, right? There is no functionality, nothing happens right now. Even though this is kind of uh, synced or wire modeled, nothing is going to happen. We don't have any logic right now. Okay, so now that we have this, first let's see how we can actually go ahead and access this dollar sign wire, right? Because if you just go ahead and you add a script tag, let me do that. So let's say I add a simple script tag. You won't actually have access to this dollar sign wire. It's only accessible under a specific kind of way of doing it. And that is, you need to actually kind of wrap your HTML script tags by the blade directive of script. So this is different from the HTML element or HTML tag of script. This is a blade directive that's added by LiveWire. It's kind of similar to if, you know, for each, all of those. And again, kind of tell with the kind of at sign, I guess, uh, symbol. And similar to all blade directives, it also has a closing tag of end script. Okay, so you need to add this. And I'll show you guys why we need to add this in a second. But basically what it does is this will run whatever you put inside of it after your library component is fully initialized, right? And that makes sure that we actually have access to this dollar sign wire, right? So if you, for example, reload, your library component won't be initialized immediately, right? It takes some time, maybe it's, I don't know, 50 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, whatever time, how long it takes, you're only going to be, be able to use or access this dollar sign wire after that specific time. And this at script basically ensures that, right? Previously, you had to do document loaded or you know any other uh, event listeners to handle that, maybe live or initialize. But now you can just go ahead and add this at script. Okay, so now that we have that inside here, we can write any kind of JavaScript code that we want, right? Now, in order to actually test this out, I'll just go ahead and I'll do a simple console log. And we can go ahead and actually kind of print this dollar sign wire. And this, I know this dollar sign looks a bit weird in JavaScript code, but that's the way basically it is defined, right? It's not PHP code. It is actually JavaScript variable. So now that we have done that, I'll go ahead and open up our console and I'll do a quick reload. And as you guys can see, this dollar sign wire is actually a JavaScript object of source, right? As you can see, it has a bunch of properties and methods and stuff like that defined on it. And we will see what it has in a second. Now, uh, just to kind of double show you guys again why this uh, script directive is important, if I comment it out and we try again, as you guys can see, we get an uncaught reference error, wire is not defined. 
So again, this is very important to add, right? In some of my older videos, I do it a bit differently because back then this uh, add script or uh, script directive did not exist. It was added around, I think, November. So yeah, from now on, you can go ahead and use that. So now that we have this starter some while, let's go ahead and see some of the things we can actually do with it, okay? So the first way you can use it is to actually read the value of a property you have, right? So here we have a bunch of properties. We have text, job, and title. So they have three public properties. And so if you want, you can read any of your public properties. And it's very easy to do. You can do dollar sign wire. And to just access the value, it's kind of similar to working with any JavaScript object. And since, as I said, it's the JavaScript representation of your backend component, we can just directly access your properties. So I can just say text, right? And this is going to return the value of the text property. And obviously, to test this out, I'm just going to log this out. So we can uh, see it. And I deleted the dollar sign. All right, so it's that simple. I can just uh, log this out. And if we do a quick reload, as you guys can see, we get John, right? So this we can go ahead and use this dollar sign wire to access the values of our properties, right? I think the next one was called job and title. So I can access those two as well. Job, title, just like this. Okay, so I'll just do a reload. And as you guys can see, it's this easy to actually, you know, read them. Now, what if you want to update the value, right? That is also easy to do. Now, in order to do the updating, I'm going to have it be kind of linked to this button. So I'm going to update the value of this, let's say, John property, which is the text property, when we click on this button, right? And obviously, we want to write this using JavaScript. I know we can do it with LiveWire as well, but we're going to be using JavaScript. So for that one, I'm just going to go ahead and copy some code that I have kind of uh, previously written, guys. So we have, we're going to save some time. But basically, I have this simple... Uh, click event listener that's uh, kind of set on my button over here. So it has an ID of BTN. I'm just getting it by, by ID and I'm adding a click listener on it. Okay, so whatever we put inside this function is going to be executed when we click on the button. So in order to update the value of a property, it's what kind of very similar to how you would do it regularly in JavaScript. We can go ahead and use this dollar sign wire, get any property we want. So dot text, for example, and I'm going to use dot text because we have this wire model on the input for text. So if we change it, we can also see the changes visually. So if I want to change it, for example, let's say I want to change it to uh, hello YouTube, right? That's all I have to do. So I can just do dollar some wire dot whatever my property name is, and then the value I want to set it as. Let's save this and let's go back. So I'll do reload. I'll minimize the terminal for now. So I can click on random text button. And as you guys can see, it got changed to Hello YouTube, just like that. So it's that easy to actually change values or properties using JavaScript, right? So if you have a JavaScript, let's say library component or anything that's JavaScript related and you want to change a value dynamically, this is how you can go ahead and do it. You can use dollar some wire and then go ahead and change its value. Now, one thing to be aware of is when you are changing your uh, properties this way using dollar some wire dot, or you're directly accessing the property, it will not update your backend. What I mean by that is it's not going to send a server request, okay? So if you have some sort of logic here that's like listening for your, you know, property changing, maybe you have a hook, it's not going to trigger those, okay? So right now, for example, I reload again, and I'm on the network tab, and I have it on fetch XHR. If I click on random text, nothing is happening, right? So by default, or basically when you're doing it this way, it is... Uh, not live, right? It's kind of similar to wire model, right? So if you're doing wire model in library 3 by default, it is lazy, right? It's not going to send any updates unless you click on a button or you perform some sort of action, right? And if you wanted it to be live, you had to do and add this dot live modifier. So if you want, what if you do want it to be live, right? Well, you can also do that, but it's slightly different. We can go ahead and do dollar some wire again, but instead of directly accessing the property, we can go ahead and use a method of set right that's defined on this dollar sign wire and it works as you probably can guess so as the first prop argument you need to pass it in the property you want to update so in this case we want to update the text property and again i'll show you guys on our back end this is it right so we're, we want to update this so i'll put text uh, without the dollar sign and then after that the second argument is the value you want to set it to so instead of hello youtube i'm going to say uh, hello youtube live okay something like that so we know it's different and I'll comment the first one, obviously. So this is similar to the above code, but the difference is it's going to be live. It's going to actually send a backend request. So if I reload now and we try it again, again, I'm on the network tab. If I click on random text, the value got changed to hello YouTube live. 
and we also performed a network request right as you guys can see so it did send the request to update the value and you can always check out the payload you know under the components as you can see it updated text to hello youtube live right so if you had some sort of code in your component that reacted to this or needed to be executed you can go ahead and actually do that maybe you have live validation or whatever okay so it's that simple so this is how you update it now if for some reason you have you're using this set and you don't want it to be live you can just go ahead and pass in another argument as the third argument and set it to false right so this is kind of what controls whether or not it's live or not and by default it is always true so if you you know later on change your mind and you want it to be false you don't need to rewrite your code you can just go ahead and add this uh, last argument of false and it will kind of uh, become lazy again or not be live anymore okay as you can see now i'm pressing it i don't think i saved it let me save again all right if i click on it as you guys can see now we are not sending any request right so it became uh, like the above code the original code so now these two are identical right with the false of course okay so that was about updating it so we looked at the reading and updating so the ne next thing i want to show you guys using what dollar sign wire which is very important and commonly used is calling methods on your component right and on my component i have previously already have added like a test method called random text and all it does is it sets my text property to a random string right of five characters and for this one i'm using the laudable uh, string helper over here so very simple code but how can you go ahead and run this from your javascript code right well this is also very easy to do and we can do it inside this again click listener we can use this dollar sign wire and we can kind of act as if it's a method defined on this dollar sign wire object right so here i can just go ahead and call the method directly so whatever it is called is called the random text i'll just copy it i'll paste this in and this is how you can call methods or i should say public methods on your backend component so this will go ahead and run it and return a promise to us but in this case we don't really care about that i'm just going to directly go ahead and call it okay so let's save this i'll go back uh, i'll i guess minimize this a little bit let's do a reload and if i click on random text it should set it to a random text or a random string as you guys can see boom 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 just like that so and again here we don't have any you know wire click on our button right this is all handled by javascript now this is a very simple use case but maybe you have i don't know a calendar javascript object uh grid or whatever whatever you have maybe you have a drag and drop that needs to execute some code you can go ahead and do there some wire to actually call some you know backend method to save it or update it or do any kind of logic you want okay so that's the process for running methods now you can also pass in arguments so if you happen to you know accept an argument such as this kind of second method that i have so it accepts a name you can just directly pass it in in the parentheses right so it's kind of like calling a regular javascript method right there, there is no difference so here for example i could pass it in here if this random text accepted an argument so let's go ahead and test it again but this time i'll do it with this test api method right so again same as before i'll do wire dot test api right that's the, what my method is called and of course this second one does accept an argument and i will go ahead and pass it in so i'll just put a random name here let's say alex okay and now because this one is returning kind of a response uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and actually log this for now so you guys can see what happens when we call one of these methods so it will return a promise to us but we can visualize it here so let's save this let's go back i'll do a reload and let me bring this up a little bit i'm going to click on random text which will go ahead and call this method for us so let me call it and now if you go inside console as you guys can see we get a javascript promise right now with the promise itself uh it's kind of similar to how you would normally do it in JavaScript. We can handle this in any form you want, but here I'm just going to go ahead and use then, and I'll pass it in another function here. And you can get the response and as an object, right? I'm just going to name it res for response. And now we can go ahead and log our response, right? I'm going to remove the original console log we had, which was logging the promise, but that's it. So you can go ahead and handle this the same way you would handle any other promise in your uh, you know javascript projects okay do i have an extra parenthesis here i think it's correct right all right so let's save this let's go back uh, i'll open up the terminal again let's do a reload i think i made a mistake here this one is correct 
This one is correct. Oh, I have an extra. Yeah, I think now it is correct. Okay. Still broken. Oh, my bad. I removed the one from my initial document dot get element. All right. So now that I think I have fixed it, now it's fixed. Sorry about that, guys. I have this so zoomed in for the video. On your video, it might look small, but on my screen, it's like so, so zoomed in. It's like three three x zoom my rig, you know normal use case. So I'm not used to it sometimes. Okay, so let's reload that. Let's go ahead and check the console. I'm just gonna click on random text, and as you guys can see, we get Alex, right? So this is what we were initially returning here, and that's all we had to do. If I were to add a couple of you know extra items in our uh, array. And I click it again, as you guys can see, we get this. So you can also use this to call any APIs, similar to how you would call an API, right? And perform actions on your backend as well. So it's quite flexible. Now, there are a couple of extra things you can do with this as well. I'm not going to be able to go through all of them. The ones that I showed you guys are the most common ones. It's probably 99% of your work is going to be using these. But if you want to see what else you can do with Dollars and Wire, just go to the documentation. I will have the link in the description, guys. But basically under, uh, if you scroll all the way down, advanced JavaScript. And on this page, you just need to scroll down until you see dollars on wire, scroll a little bit more. And it's going to basically give you the list of all the available things you can do, right? So this is the dollars on wire object. It has get and set. We already use set. You don't necessarily need to use get, but you can also use that. There is toggle, right? And this is kind of similar to magic actions. I have a video on magic actions. You can just toggle a Boolean value instead of, you know, writing the logic for doing that. There is a call here if you want to call a method. Uh, there is entangle. If you have used Alpine.js, you probably know what that is. It's exactly the same as, uh, you know, Alpine.js entangle. There is watch. You can use this to watch for changes on a property and then, you know, call, have a callback executed. There is refresh. We can kind of guess it refreshes your component. There is commit on and a bunch of other two things, right? For example, if you want to dispatch an event in using JavaScript, you can use that as well. Use dollar sign wire to dispatch it. You can do the dispatch self and then upload and a couple of, you know, a couple of other extra stuff, right? So uh, that's it guys for dollar sign wire. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and learned something new. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. Uh, I'll try to help you guys out if I know the answer. And if you see someone else's comment and you know the answer, please help them out. And as always, guys, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.